Hey there, welcome to The Drawing Codex. One of the biggest challenges that we face as artists is often putting it all together. It's easy to do little studies or exercises here or there or grasp one concept, but putting it all together and making a finished drawing is often a big challenge. In this video, I want to do a demonstration where we deal with figure drawing. More specifically, I'm going to draw some fantasy characters from start to finish using some of the concepts that I've been covering on this channel recently. And those are building up the character from a mannequin using systems and ideas that you would probably find in traditional how to draw books, such as Andrew Loomis's Drawing the Head and Hands or Figure Drawing for All It's Worth. Now, to give you some context for what we're going to do, I draw comics for a living. I design stuff for video games for a living. So, we're going to be exaggerating things. And the best example that I like to use for that kind of ethos is the traditional Capcom illustrations from this book, Capcom Design Works. Again, it's just a good example that we can use so that you know what I'm about and what we're going to do. We're going to try and exaggerate anatomy, but still draw all of the things that need to be there. Try and make it correct, but make it cool and stylized. Again, this is going to take us from the beginning to the end of a drawing and try and pull all these concepts together where we start with a stick figure and a mannequin that's similar to a skeleton. And then we're going to pose that and then add muscle. And I want to focus on one concept that I think is really key, which is how do we use that mannequin to control the proportion and the look of our final characters? So we'll do that, but it won't be so much of a lesson. It'll be more of a demonstration where I'm focusing on making something that is a little bit more interesting and stepping you through my thought process for how I actually do this. And this is exactly the same way I do it day in, day out, all day, every day when I'm drawing comics and other stuff professionally. All right, welcome again to The Drawing Codex. My name's Tim McBurney. I've been a professional working artist for over 20 years and I draw comics and concept art, etc., all day, every day as a job. And I'm just gonna demonstrate how I would walk through this type of process. Now, if you wanna learn a little bit more about the line and color style that I tend to employ, you can check out my free quick start guide. It goes over my advice for setting up and developing your own simple, reliable process in Photoshop for creating line and color illustrations. This is where we create worlds with simple line and color that can be similar to the type of art that you've seen on my art station or somewhere else or similar to the type of art that you might see in a book like Capcom Design Works where again it's often just simple line and color. You can do a lot with this technique so that's what my quick start guide is there for. You can go check it out. It's free. The link is in the description. Okay, so the goal just quickly with this demonstration is to give you a feeling for what it's like to put all these concepts together. We've got the concept of the mannequin, building the pose up and adding muscles and then trying to think about how we connect the posture with the finished character that we're going to draw. So often, again, as I said, the challenge is putting all these things together and often that process is a little bit more messy than what we sort of imagine when we're learning. When we learn, we're often following steps a little bit more. You know, you might be looking at some of the, you know, how-to stuff in, you know, your favorite how to draw book or a book like, um, again, Andrew Loomis's Drawing the Head and Hands. And it has these very linear processes, right? Do this, then do this, and do this, then do this. And again, it's really, really important to kind of understand things at a basic level like that. But as I'm often saying, the application can be a little bit more messy, a little bit more creative, a little bit more artistic. But what I want to do is try and connect those dots and show you where I'm using the tools that I've often been demonstrating in drawing lessons on this channel. How I actually use those when I'm just sort of drawing stuff and actually posing characters in three dimensions, thinking about perspective, thinking about anatomy, thinking about posture, etc., etc., etc. All right, let's jump over to the drawing table. All right, so here we are at the drawing table. Now, I'm going to draw in this sketchbook, which is a Strathmore 400 series recycled sketch sketchbook. I'm going to be drawing with a black wing matte black 
darker Blackwing and I have a two stage Blackwing sharpener that I'll sometimes use. And the other tool that I'm often playing around with is a simple kneadable eraser, which allows me to sort of take off some of the graphite, which we'll be using a little bit more in this demonstration because again, what we'll be doing is building up the figure. And often when you build up the figure, it's important to have something that you can kind of take down the work that you've done a little bit in sort of darkness and intensity so that you can then go in and pick out the lines and muscles that you actually want for your finished drawing. Now, we're not going to be doing something that is hyper, hyper finished. I'm still focusing on the concepts of structural drawing. And those are the same concepts that you can find in Andrew Loomis's books or, you know, most sort of how to draw books that are good and worth their salt. Now, part of this, again, is understanding where we want to go. And I, I always say this, but I, I think it's worth repeating, is the intent is really key. There's so many different ways to draw anatomy and to create drawings. And what I'm sort of mostly about, because this is the kind of art that I like, and I feel like it's just a really good example of how we can learn anatomy and focus on anatomy, because so many of these Street Fighter characters and and those things have, um, you know, heaps of anatomy and musculature visible. So it's a really good example of how we can stay true to good drawing, solid drawing, and still exaggerate and push things as much as we need to. So again, just keep in mind, that's kind of where I'm going with it. But I'm going to be drawing my own sort of fantasy characters and just making some stuff up as we go. And what I will do is just reference the stages that a bunch of books fell over. So what I'm going to be doing is referencing the stages that we would find in a book like figure drawing for all it's worth. And as I said, there's some other videos that specifically go over these concepts in a little bit more detail as a drawing lesson on the Drawing Codex channel. But we're going to start with the most important thing, which is an idea or a thumbnail sketch somewhere we want to go. And this is something that I talk a lot about on that quick start guide. So just let me grab the little sketch that I had. Here we are. So this is just a super basic little me sketching around and sort of thinking through a pose. The more you need to sort of figure this out yourself, the more sort of thumbnail you need to do. I talk a lot about this, as I said, in that quick start guide that I mentioned, talking about how we sort of start with thumbnails and rough ideas and how important that is to your ideation process and just your process in general. This is something that I've always done is start with a little idea. Now, I'm sort of creating this primarily to help us understand the process of going from using stick figures and mannequins that you would find in a book like the Loomis Method that I've talked about before. And in that case, again, the idea is to sort of extract the basic proportion from the figure that we sort of find on the pages that talk specifically about setting up a mannequin. And what we want to do is just see how we can use this to kind of pose the character. Then we sort of build musculature on top. Again, this is a simple, common um, idea that you know, you've probably seen talked about a lot. What we're going to do is sort of demonstrate how that functions. So I'm sort of setting something up that allows me to create a nice simple drawing, but also something that will force me to sort of add perspective and actually think about the solidarity. This is a good mix that I'm sort of defining for a demo. So as I always say, it's really important to get your intention set from the beginning. One of the intentions I always have when I'm doing these demonstrations is to pick something that's going to allow me to demonstrate the concept. So it's not always going to be the most exaggerated pose or, you know, the thing that has the, the, the most sort of artistic merit, let's say. I'm primarily doing this to kind of show how we can just design some interesting figures. And the concept here is we've got a few figures that are sort of posed from different angles. We'll have a larger sort of warrior figure and then a smaller sort of female rogue style character or something like that. We'll figure it out as we go along. And we're sort of looking up at them and we've got these sort of rocks or some random sort of set piece of stuff that's underneath them that sort of puts them at different levels. So there's a bit of drawing we need to take into consideration, a bit of theory that we need to apply here to make this work. 
So let's jump in and see how we go. And again, I'm paying attention to how much of the page is kind of visible on the screen. And what we'll do is just start by kind of roughing that in. Now, a really good way if you're struggling at sort of roughing this in on, on a big page, if the idea of sort of taking this and then just sort of redrawing it or figuring it out is challenging, what you can do is kind of scan this or take a photo of this and then print out another version of it. Another really good thing you can do these days is if you have an iPad, what you can do is kind of take a photo of this with your iPad or tablet and then display that photo. And what you'll find is if you then sort of put that tablet underneath here, it will actually allow you to kind of see what that drawing is like. It might actually just be worth me demonstrating that because it is quite a cool trick if that's something you're struggling with. All right, so here we go. So again, this is something I've done with my iPad camera. I will have to reduce the brightness of that so you can actually sort of see it. Um, and I'll increase the brightness in a second. So this is not going to work for something that's highly, highly detailed. Um, but it's a really, really good trick to get you started. And it, it might actually work pretty well for something that's um, that's pretty detailed. But yeah, so this is the basic idea. If we take this, then you can slip it under your page. And obviously this limits the size that you can sort of create something at. And then you can kind of trace it, right? Um, and, you know, there you go. So that might be a good option if you're really struggling and you don't have, you know, a bunch of fancy stuff, um, you know, like um, light tables or printers, etc. You could also do that on a standard computer monitor, right? If you have a loose sheet of paper, what you can do is just take a photo with your smartphone, get it to your laptop or computer or wherever. You've got a monitor and then you basically just put that big um, on your screen and that's basically like a light box, you know, it's quite useful. You can then just sort of trace off the rough version, which is, which is often what you need. I'm not gonna do that, however, I'm just gonna try and wing it and sort of put these characters in, which again is a, actually a really, really good thing to try and do because it helps to improve your drawing immensely. So let's block this in and I'll do this in a couple of different sort of phases because I will need to double, triple check what this is looking like when I'm like properly above the page. And this can be a big challenge when you're doing this. It's just making sure as you put in the characters just being sure that you know that you know you're, you're looking at the page directly, you're looking at straight on, and there's not going to be any funny business in terms of you thinking that you're drawing a straight line, but actually it's kind of tilted. This is just simple, I guess, uh, geometry of the eye is that if if you're not looking dead on at the page, it's hard to know whether or not you're drawing properly. If you look at the page for an angle, like I'm sort of looking at the page for an angle like this, um, because I don't want to get my head in front of the camera, then um, what often happens is that, uh, you know, you kind of draw everything and it looks good from your angle. But then when you shift angles and look at it directly, it doesn't look right. It looks a bit skewed. So it's really important to have a couple of defined stages to your sketching where you specifically check those things. You check a lot of things. But initially what I want to do is kind of just rough everything in and make sure that stuff is going to fit and the proportion is going to work. It's important when we're working to, I think, have those two separate ideas really well sorted. The first is that I don't want to start thinking about perspective. I don't want to start thinking about anything too solid. I want to work lightly and I want to focus mostly on just getting stuff in, you know, just making sure that this is all going to fit and making sure that the characters are going to be sort of the right size and that they're just going to take up the right amount of page. If I get that wrong, then, you know, the, the rest of it is sort of a little bit pointless. Let me just increase the brightness of the light a little bit. There we go. I think that should be a little bit better. And I just want to make sure all those things are right before we get started because often it can be really hard to see 
on the screen these faint lines that I'm drawing. So my goal is to try and make them as light as um, possible so that I, I'm not going to mess up the page, but so you can see them. So forgive me if some of these are really light. This might be something that is really worth looking at on a big screen so you can sort of see them. But don't worry, they will get darker and you'll see what's happening. But again, this is a really, really important phase of the drawing even though it's a little bit hard to see what's going on, this is often where we mess up because we just don't get things to be the right size and we don't get stuff to actually fill up the canvas. So this is the kind of thing that often you just skip over and you won't really notice is happening if you just kind of look at my process, right? It seems like, you know, yeah, I'm just kind of, you know, doing a bit of, you know, rough, pointless drawing right and it's like not actually that that critical you know I'm just sort of scrabbling around but the reason I'm scrabbling around is because I don't want to put down any lines that are going to be you know that finished and what I'm trying to do is block in the overall sort of look and so you can see I'm I'm doing all of the things that I would talk about when it comes to drawing mannequins and figuring those things out, but I'm doing it very roughly. And yeah, just kind of holding the pencil pretty with, with this kind of like long grip. And, and again, that just helps me, A, helps you see what I'm drawing a little bit better, but also just really helps me with that concept of uh, staying loose. And the, the purpose for staying loose is if we sort of, again, and I'm, I'm looking at sort of this and, and trying to sort of follow this general idea Got a character kind of sitting here, and then we're going to have sort of a rock here, and we, this character actually, I, I feel like we need to kind of put them up a little bit, All right? So again, I've noticed I've got plenty of room up here. I can put this head up here, All right? Find center line on the the egg shaped torso, All right? And I've got my perspective lines going this way, All right? I've got horizon line somewhere down there and I'm putting in this perspective as super rough right so this perspective probably won't work if I was to actually draw all of these things to vanishing points or, or anything like that um, it's probably probably just sort of really really fake but it just helps me to roughly line things up and, and keep things a little bit honest the less you know about perspective the more technical you're probably going to have to be with it so I've got a head up here again, just roughly placed. I've got this character placed here, right? We've got some shoulders here. So we've got that rib cage, put in the rib cage, right? Thinking about where the hips are going to be. We've got legs, legs, and then we've got this character sort of got this arm out here, right? And out there, and they're holding something. And this other arm is kind of over here, right, over here. And then we've sort of got a leg, right, coming over here, sitting on a thing. So you can see that I'm being very rough. I'm being very loose. And that's allowing me to not care about this exact set of proportions or really any of this currently. So this is going to be a bigger sort of muscly fantasy character again maybe some sort of animalistic character uh, similar to things that I've sort of drawn in the past and, and this will be sort of more of a, like a rogue like female character um, again mostly just to describe the difference between someone you know how we sort of use these same armatures these same mannequins these same stick figures and just apply different proportions and then muscles on top so this is the first step is like does it fit right? Does it fit? Can we get all the proportions in place? Can we get that to work? Am I going to regret what's happening now? I noticed that in this case, I actually have this leg quite well foreshortened. So again, what I often suggest we do is kind of focus a little bit more on the dimensionality of that form so I can just feel whether or not that's kind of right. And I'm going to move that here. And I'm going to move, again, we sort of see that, again, I think he kind of actually has that leg hidden. Now, um, again, um, 
that is just makes it easier to draw if the if the leg is kind of hidden there but again we can sort of show it we'll, we'll see what happens still rough right still playing around with um, positioning so one of the things that is important is you you will probably only learn to take it really slow and take it really easy at this stage after you've messed it up right and, and created massive problems for yourself many many times so part of going slow here and double triple checking everything and making sure that you know we've got got the right stuff happening is just the knowledge that if i don't do that i'll probably regret it okay so on here we sort of have a sword coming down at an angle that's a bit like this and again this one kind of goes up there but we're probably not going to be able to do that right so we're probably looking at something that's yeah going to sort of take up this space again part of the part of the process is just figuring out what's going to take up space and as i draw this in more detail i'm going to learn things about this particular pose about this particular posture and whether or not it's going to work right whether or not it's going to look good whether or not it's going to look interesting. And again, you can rush you can rush ahead or or not. That's totally up to you. So I'm just checking the the overall kind of look of what we've got here. And what I'm going to do is just rotate this a little bit so I can see it front on and that'll allow me to sort of check it properly. But it means for for you it's going to look a little bit sort of funny, right? So what I would typically do if I'm sort of drawing on a flat surface is sort of tilt this up and just double check some of these proportions, right? Think about where some of these other proportional markers are going to be, right? Here we've got that sort of head and just thinking about like, you know, where that bottom of the, the chin is going to be. So again, I'm just sort of roughing it in as a, as a human just to show you how I would sort of do that, but we'll see what it actually ends up being. And again, I, I really want to kind of push this out a little bit more even, right? Have these shoulders be out a little bit more. Got center line, so just defining that center line there. And yeah, just making sure that stuff is sort of mostly centered and stuff is going to line up. Very easy to miss that if we're not careful to accidentally make sure that you know a few things are off. I'm going to check things like here. We've got the length of these limbs. It feels like again this one could be a little bit, a little bit longer, which again changes where this kind of sword is going to be. So we're sort of shifting things around, right? And that is a critical part of this process. Often, again, when you're seeing these things demonstrated, right, we're seeing a nice clear version of it that explains theory. But the process of doing these things is often more messy, as I said, which is the point of doing a demonstration. When we're doing drawing education, part of my goal is to be as clear as possible, as linear as possible, and, and not to kind of, you know, go back and forward and arm and ah, but when I'm drawing, often the things that I'm I'm really kind of focusing on are going to be uh, just fiddling around and seeing how it feels like and seeing whether it fits in the right frame and you know seeing what the character you know is is you know feeling like and and looking like and and all those kind of things. So again, what I would probably do is is keep going with that process of tilting this up and just double triple checking everything so this is feeling like this could work uh, i feel like the proportions here the, the rough idea are going in the right direction we can start to mass in some of those some of those other forms think about putting in a few other landmarks etc right during our standard sort of you know big superhero-esque character and putting in some markers to kind of just define the overall mass get that character feeling right 
And again, this is super quick and easy for me to do, even though I'm sort of, you know, got it up at, a, at an angle. All right, let's see if we can take away some of this because I keep getting confused about where that leg sort of really needs to be. So again, this is a little bit foreshortened, i.e. coming at us. And this leg is kind of going here. So again, how long this leg would actually be, it's probably over here behind on one of these rocks as opposed to sitting on this one. But that's fine. Again, we'll draw in some mass to kind of quickly represent where that calf is going to be. Same with that calf. Right. Draw this down here. And probably, again, we can sort of cut off that leg to save us some time drawing legs that are kind of down in the bottom and, and being a bit fiddly. We'll see how we go with that. So let's look at this, this character over here and again, true up that from uh, a dimensional point of view. So the main thing here that I'd probably be worried about is just that center line, right? Does it feel like that character is sort of evenly weighted? And, you know, it, it's looking okay. I'm just gonna make sure I draw in some of these lines and draw in that center line draw in some of those other elements a little bit clearer because I think that will help. Now again, it's always good to get some more uh, interesting posture happening. We'll, we'll, we'll see how we go with that, right? Let, let's see let's see and play around with that because um, that can be kind of tricky, right? Um, to sort of match that with the perspective. So it, it might be something where it's better to do a demo specifically talking about how to kind of, you know, adjust those postures and things. Um, but, you know, what, what I might do is think about where that center line is. And then what we'll think about is where these legs are positioned. So I'm going to put this leg a little bit closer to the center line. And what that's going to do is tip this up. So we'll do a little bit of that. And you see how it kind of plays into what we're doing. And you'll also see how important it is to understand the perspective in a situation like that. So I've kind of defined the basic perspective grid for what's happening with this character, right? There's a quite a bit of perspective twist on things. And if I'm going to then make this tilt up, right? So the character is resting on this leg. What that does is it kind of tilts this up, right? So that this is going up even, even more, which again is kind of a subtle change, but it basically means we kind of have to think about where these points are even more so on an angle. All right, so we got that, and then we're going to have right, a leg kind of up here. And then this leg is going to sort of kick out a little bit. This is going to kick out here. So you can see that's a pretty small change, but it's going to drastically affect the overall look of the character and I'm going to make sure the rib cage is like a little bit smaller and again we could probably again play with these legs being a little bit a little bit longer maybe again that might be sort of good and then we're going to have these shoulders are actually going to now sort of twist a little bit the other way. But what you'll find again is managing these kind of tricks with the perspective is quite challenging. And then I'm going to make sure that I draw the head quite straight on, right, to kind of anchor that perspective. Now, this is one of those things where depending on how you play around with these concepts of posing, you can easily draw stuff that just looks stupid, right? It just doesn't feel right, doesn't look right. So you do have to be um, really sort of careful about that. I'm sort of looking at this and I think it might be good to maybe actually twist her torso so it's 
facing us a little bit more. All right, so that's going there. All right, so this is going to be sort of like this a little bit, but again, twisted. And I'll double check the perspective of this. So I'm looking at it front on. Boom. Boom. And what we'll do is just so we're creating something remotely sort of interesting, think about where we could pose these hands and, and what we could sort of do. So we could maybe have this arm kind of here, although that looks a bit, it's looking a bit sort of cliche. And again, we'll have to think about exactly where that sort of head is going and maybe those shoulders need to go up a little bit. So just adjusting stuff by eye. I know it feels like when I'm doing this that, or at least as I observe myself that, again, there's like an obsessive amount of sort of moving stuff around and sort of fiddling with stuff. But this is honestly where you make or break the drawing. It's easy to kind of talk a big game about proportion and, you know, getting stuff sort of solid. But if we don't pay attention to it at this initial phase and kind of try and make everything work and think through it, then, you know, the whole thing often doesn't work. You know, it just doesn't come together. And, you know, that's often, that's often a big sort of problem. So, again, we could have this arm right down here. So I'm also thinking about posing. And this is where, again, once you get into trying to handle sort of multiple characters in a scene, it's really important to be able to think through where all of these poses go and, and how that kind of stuff works. Because, again, I, I don't want these hands to kind of be too close to each other. So I think it might be better if we kind of put, even though it doesn't make as much sense, to kind of put this, this arm over here. And maybe we'll sort of have right another, I'll do this sort of classic generic sort of pose that I'm often doing where we've got a arm up here. Again. Something like that. We'll try to get some sort of dimensionality in there. Now, again, the more force shortening you add, the more you sort of trick stuff out, the more you try and make it complicated, the harder the pose is going to be to read, right? The more complicated stuff gets. So it is often good to just keep things simple. As I always say, not every pose is a good pose just because you can draw it well. Often simpler, more um, graphic poses where it's easier to read the figures are actually going to be a lot easier for you to you know, do to draw, everything just becomes easier. If we if we don't do it, then it becomes a real challenge. So again, just playing around with that posture, right? Kicking that out. Um, again, this might look a little bit too sassy when we actually put stuff to it, but you can see how, um, and, and by that, you know, it, it feels a little bit sort of like 80s fantasy art, right? Where everyone's sort of superposed, <laughs> like, you know, it's not, not, not super realistic or natural in any way, shape, or form. Um, anyway, let's see how this how this tracks. So there you go. Again, we've got like things roughed in kind of and we we're, we're playing around with the with the posing there. Not quite sure about about how this sort of contrapposto is kind of working, it, it might be better to kind of have the right have this kind of shoulder up here because that looks a little bit more natural. Um, that doesn't really work with the the opposing sort of limbs here, right? But again, we'll we'll sort of see how that works. That might be something that again, where the position of the shoulder is kind of moving to. Um, sort of capture this sword a little bit more. So again, these are all considerations you play around with it. And the, the reason I like to take a little bit more time here and 
not try and make this you know one and done or really easy it's just to show the actual kind of process that i would normally go through if i'm drawing something i might go through it a little bit quicker if i am you know like not talking through it but there is a lot of back and forth there is a lot of kind of fiddling around and thinking about this and um you know but that's that's often where things succeed or fail so let's let's take a look at this again trying to sort of think about it from much more of a front on angle and i probably need to sharpen this pencil thinking about where center line is where these things are so often you know the difference between it feeling kind of accurate and in inaccurate as it relates to you know seeing the drawing front on versus from side it, it is often just very very small measurements right it's a very small difference from it sort of feeling like yep that looks kind of solid right and versus it not looking solid so i think what i'm going to do is actually kind of change these just again to demonstrate how you can sort of do this and how it's fine to kind of keep drawing around. Um, so I'm going to sort of change the, the angle of these, right? Because again, that contra angle, the contraposto there is kind of not really sort of working. If I kind of put it, if I sort of change it here, so we've got, right, going around there here all right thinking about where that sort of pelvis is it just redrawing keep keep sort of redrawing keep playing around um, until it sort of you know starts to feel kind of right um, again you can you can think about it and, and be really analytical about it but um, often you know there's there's no problem with sort of redrawing until we kind of get that the right look so again here, I'm just going to put that um, out a little bit more. It's it's sort of less realistic and it, it'll be a little bit more sort of graphic, but that'll be a lot easier to read. And again, let's redefine where this kind of center is. All right, then we're going to kind of draw that line down there. And again, just keep playing around. If you're light with this and we don't mess things up too much, like by, you know, in terms of like ruining the paper, then these things are actually, you know, you can keep redrawing quite a bit. Now, this is sketch paper, as I said, and you're going to have a lot more success doing this type of heavy redrawing and playing around with stuff if you are working on a, a proper sort of drawing paper right or, or something that will handle heavy redrawing but anyway that that's sort of a good example of how i would sort of handle that first one and again just showing showing you how it can take a while to sort of get it right you know it can take a you know quite a while to sort of figure that out but that's the basic posing right this is kind of what we what we what we begin with now the next phase is to sort of build out the indications of the musculature or armature. And again, you can take some of this off. You know, I'm just taking some of it off because I don't want things to get too messy, right? Don't want things to get too messy. And we'll sharpen this pencil again. And the next phase is going to be sort of blocking in some of the costumes, still keeping things pretty, pretty sort of rough, blocking in some of that musculature. And then what we'll do is sort of do a, a final sort of a raising pass and put in some of the details. But again, you know, I'm not going to take this to some super high level of finish. The primary goal here is to talk about constructive anatomy and how we add musculature and how we build the figure. So we don't need to take it to a super high level of polish. But uh, so if we look at our sort of mannequin phase in our Loomis book, what we have done is again deal with this kind of initial 
initial kind of mannequin stick figure. And what we sort of want to do next is kind of, you know, add some more features that are going to indicate what the character is going to look like. Because hopefully at this point, we sort of, you know, handled a lot of the, the structure, right? A lot of the actual um, perspective. And, and, and that's kind of really what you want to have um, sorted at this stage. So, yeah, let's think about making this character more of a, an animalistic sort of character. So I'm thinking still about centerline, right? And I'm thinking still about some of those anatomical features that we might sort of have on the skull. But I'm going to, you know, make the character into much more of a an animalistic or some kind of fantasy character just to show how again we would sort of change these things even further as we as we go so thinking about center where a lot of these different elements are going to go and again what I'm doing is just adding that primary form so thinking about where some of those big shapes are going to go and once I've sort of done that then it's a lot easier to then go in and add that detail. So we're going to do some things like line stuff up, right, with these ears. Uh, again, not sure if we want... So you could, this is where we can play around. Do we want ears like this? All right, do we want ears that make the character a little bit more animalistic? even still, right, so like at a, connecting to a different spot. So again, a bit of a mix of like an orc and a lion or something like that. So still, I'm going to keep things pretty rough because I need to get over that drawing and check it out. So let's build in some of the musculature. Now, technically, you know, probably what we could do is think about putting armor or something like that on the character. I'm just going to stick to anatomy at this stage and not put a lot of costuming or anything like that on the characters just to really focus on the basics, just to focus on the fundamental concepts that I think are important here, which is kind of how we build the anatomy. All right, so let's continue with that. So let's think about some of these pectorals. Again, there's many, many ways to kind of build these up. I'm just going to focus a little bit more on this character, on just sort of massing things in, right? We've got some of these big sort of muscles, these big sort of deltoids and things, big biceps. And I'm going to use some basic sort of anatomy knowledge to get these things started. Now, if I wanted to increase my anatomical knowledge here, um, you know, it could be worth getting out some reference, looking at either some of the medical grade reference that I have to kind of think about where those things go. And we might do a little bit of that. Um, you know, if, if I'm unsure of something, that's kind of what I'll do. But for the moment, again, this is pretty stylized stuff. So I'm just going to go with what I have done in the past. But again, I'm just adding mass, right? Adding bulk here and there to deal with making the character feel a particular way. Again, thinking about the neck being chunky, where these general lines are going to go. All right, we've got this big sort of rib cage. And again, I don't want to give the character like super sort of lean musculature because they're super chunky, doesn't doesn't make that much sense for me to kind of draw crazy abs or something like that on a character like that. Thinking more more of them as like a sort of strongman anatomy, let's say. And let's put in so again, we're going to sort of have some kind of more barbarian-esque armor or features or something like that. Again, I often do this with demonstrations because um, fantasy characters don't have a lot of clothes on when they're in that sort of classic Conan the Barbarian 
fantasy mold, which is just a good way to kind of describe what's happening with the anatomy. As I always say, my anatomy is not, you know, the best. Uh, I, I, I stick very much to, you know, just kind of drawing stuff, uh, you know, and sort of trying to, you know, muddle my way through. Um, there's people who, you know, focus a lot more on, you know, realistic anatomy and, and getting everything in there and, um, you know, really kind of building out some of those secondary forms and, and making it all realistic. I, I tend to just kind of, you know, focus a little bit more on, on the character side of it, a little bit less on um, drawing every muscle perfectly. As a general rule, if you get the proportion looking okay, then, you know, you can kind of get away without making everything else 100%. But again, we'll see if we can add a, a few little bits and pieces that, that might make the character um, more interesting. So I'm tracking things that I'm doing. I'm, I'm tracking center. All right, we can see where the center line is of the character. I'm, again, using that sort of center line of this sort of beard form as well. Uh, we've got center line of the of the face. That's helping me to place these things symmetrically. Again, I need to sort of get on top of the drawing to double check that. But that's the basic idea. So now that I've kind of drawn this, this is going to clear up and clarify a little bit of sort of where I draw the hand and, and how I kind of handle that. So I'm going to A, put in that sort of hand as a little bit more of a you know, a, a proper kind of shape. And I'm also then going to think about how the, the sword that he's holding is kind of fitting through that hand. So we're going to have some kind of hilt. All right, we've got the sort of the handle of the sword. Again, I'm not going to design some crazy um, new interesting sword, we'll just keep it kind of simple, although we'll make the blade a little bit chunkier. And then, again, the, the idea is to kind of make sure that this this main sort of stem, or whatever you would call this bit of the sword, is kind of flowing nicely. It doesn't create any sort of super weird shapes, and that that flows nicely into the handle. I think that that's normally what will make the most difference. All right, so if we sort of have this, again, we got an interesting shape, but you can see that I'm like constructing this through here and doing the draw through just helps me to get the, the feeling of that right there. And again, what I'm doing is thinking about the sort of, you know, angle, right? Like where it's sort of being held and trying to sort of add that to the construction. So that's sort of kind of there. And again, we would have another sort of hand over here somewhere that's probably not going to be in focus or you know a huge part of the drawing we'll put it over there again I'm not sure whether that's too big or too long we, we can sort of adjust that later I'm also just gonna double down and think about where some of these other forms are right some of these sort of rocks that are going to show us overlap and depth because again this character is sort of sitting on or standing on some of them and that would be good to at least have some idea about where they go and sort of how they relate to everything it's probably not that important for this actual demonstration but this is the sort of stuff that i would do in sequence right so again just demonstrating the sequence so now i've got a bit of a problem uh, i've drawn this bit on this side and maybe i should have started with this character because now if i sort of work here i'm going to sort of start to destroy and break down that drawing this is where you know you can employ even if you're just sketching you know have a few bit of bits of extra kind of paper lying around that will kind of help all right so now we've got Um, and I can kind of see, I can see that this guy is going to need a little bit of tweaking um, when I sort of look at it front on, but I'm just going to move through the drawing and solve those problems sequentially. So we're going to do the, the same thing for this character. Just kind of build out some of those uh, forms and maybe, you know, try and make the character a little bit, a little bit interesting. 
again, the reason I always choose, again, similar sort of subjects for demonstrations is it, it's a good mix. Again, it's good to sort of show how you can use the same drawing concepts to kind of create characters that are um, not human, right? We use the same basic idea. It's just a matter of modifying the forms. So same idea here. We've got that skull, and I'm going to use, you know, basically that Loomis method that, um, you know, I'm always sort of talking about. We're going to draw that center line down there. I'm going to try and draw those, you know, two sides of the forehead, right? I'm going to sort of try and indicate where the cheeks are to kind of help me put in the bottom of the chin. And yeah, see if I can just sort of rough in a face there. Again, I want to keep it pretty rough because I might have to trash it, right? I might have to just throw the whole thing away. Um, but yeah, just keeping these things um, like drawing in the head and kind of, you know, double checking that is sometimes can be really worthwhile because it, it helps us to kind of think about all the other bits and pieces that are there. So even though it's, you know, we might have to redraw it, it's good to kind of, you know, at least put those bits and pieces in there and have them as a start. All right. And uh, again, we'll talk a little bit about, you know, drawing from different angles and all those things. Again, this head is not looking. I think I need to take that nose out. That's not helping me at the moment. Um, yeah, so what we're going to do is think about, again, adding some simple forms here. Again, I feel like that. Just looking at the, the basic sort of proportion, I, I, I feel like this um, and shoulder needs to come in a little bit, but that could just be me readjusting things, and I should have kept it there because I put it there when I was looking at it front on. So you always have to be constantly balancing, like step back a little bit mentally from the drawing. You don't have to step back physically, but mentally step back from the drawing and say, okay, wh what's wrong? What's right? What's working? What's not working? All right, so we got our sort of deltoid that I'm just sort of massing in there. Again, it, these things don't represent the exact position of a deltoid, but putting them in helps me to sort of visualize that space a little bit more. And again, one of the things that I'm going to try and do is just indicate roughly, roughly where the rest of these forms are going to go because that will help me immensely when it comes to just visualizing what the character is going to look like. So often what we're doing when we use this structure on um, sort of a female character is it, is it can be a really good way to help us visualize what's happening with the silhouette of the legs. All right, so we're going to have a, a couple of things happen here. I'm going to define some form along that torso because that will be sort of really useful for placing in um, again just center line and breasts and those kind of things and again thinking about center line right of what's kind of happening right what's happening with the with the ribs etc so in this case again I'm, I'm just adding less bulk i'm thinking more about a character that's sticking closely to the skeleton but having having these Again, that's going to sort of be out there. Having these sort of hip bones that we actually kind of draw in is really useful because often these silhouettes that we find, right, the points, these sort of curves on that sort of more feminized figure are going to be made from those bones. Obviously, again, a lot of that varies based on genetics and what, you know, it's going to look like in general. Um, you know, d depending on sort of where these things are placed and how big the spine is and, you know, how, how what the difference is between, um, you know, how close the hips are to the to the torso, et cetera, et cetera. But again, just as a general rule, it, the, it can be really, really useful to have these little sort of bones there that just represent that part of the skeleton. I'll just get it so we can sort of show and describe what's happening there. All right, so as you can see, this is a male skeleton, which is only gonna get us sort of so far because it might have slightly different proportions sometimes. Um, but yeah, what we're dealing with is this 
hip bone, basically, that sort of attaches to the pelvic um, bone here. And it's this indication that will often give us some of these key indicators on the figure, right? It gives us these kind of curves that you can often see, right? So it's often these curves that you're going to see on the male and female figure that are, they're actually kind of based off where the hip bone is, right? And sort of exactly where it kind of attaches to everything. I oh, need to stick that guy back in. But yeah, so that's, that's the basic idea. Um, you know, often it's really, really important just to think about the skeleton and how it relates to the finished figure. This is obviously something that, you know, takes a long time to, to perfect, but these are the things that, you know, you learn. And again, this is not a real skeleton, it's just a fake little skeleton, but it's giving me some indication of where things should line up, again, as it's kind of tilted. And that will help me a lot. Again, especially as, you know, especially if it's really important. Right here, I think a lot of this stuff will probably get a little bit lost, right? We're going to put in some generic fantasy costume bits here. But yeah, this is often what we're doing. Thinking about the knees there, right? Think about the, the foot, putting that in. So again, that's sort of getting a little bit exaggerated, but that's fine because it kind of, you know, feels like there's maybe a little bit of a camera angle there and yeah, you know, the, one of the reasons why it's good to put things on rocks or like on steady ground is, you know, it doesn't look really super weird if things become a little bit sort of discombobulated from a, you know, standing on something point of view, right? You can kind of excuse it by saying, oh yeah, but there's this thing's overlapping that thing, etc., etc. So anyway, you know, that's kind of how we would use that uh, mannequin at, at a much more sort of granular level to kind of figure out where those things go. And obviously, right, you know, in the end, we kind of erase where those bones go, but we've got a good indication of, um, you know, a reasonable version of anatomy. Again, just doing it from imagination, no sort of reference. Reference will obviously help you a lot, especially as you come to create, you know, very, very different uh, body types, right? Again, you're probably looking at me drawing the same kind of memorized female figure, the same kind of memorized male figure, and maybe that wouldn't work as well if, you know, you, you told me to immediately draw something that's sort of drastically different, then I'd need to get some reference and figure that out. So this character has, again, their own kind of sword. And what I might do is just sort of put that in the sheath there. All right, so again, this is all kind of still pretty rough, so I don't, I don't want to go too much further. What we're going to have is maybe just, again, some sort of classic, uh, generic, for better or worse, fantasy um, clothing. All right, so we'll place in the breasts because that will kind of help us with this. Again, I'm going to use the basic technique of kind of tracing along that torso and then I'm going to put in a sort of circular shape that kind of represents where the breast kind of goes and again it's a little bit of sort of a teardrop shape um, that I'm using again breasts come in all different shapes and sizes and there's no real sort of rules um, but I, I do find it useful to use this technique where we sort of mass in the other anatomical elements of the breast that often connect it up to the deltoid, right? That often does help. But I think, um, you know, in, in many cases, because I've got really long sort of wide shoulders, um, again, we have to sort of think about that. So that's something that, again, I'll, I'll kind of look at as I, um, as I sort of re redraw. These are just in there as a, as a base. And we got to really consider where center line is and, and how that kind of works um, with that anatomy, right? Where is the center between those two breasts and how does that kind of work? Again, my kind of feeling is 
I want to sort of move them a little bit more to the center, but not that much. And again, we've got like quite a, a warrior-esque sort of female character. So th there's often cases where, you know, this is what we'll do, right? We'll, we'll just kind of, you know, be going along. And you can either say like, yes, I do want the character to be, you know, to feel more muscular, right? Because again, this is a fantasy world and they have a sword. So obviously they're going to look a little bit more like a female MMA fighter or a female uh, combat um, specialist as opposed to, you know, maybe like a bikini model or something like that. Um, and, you know, that there's reason that they would have sort of wider shoulders and more sort of defined musculature. Um, or you might want to sort of temper that, right? Again, going for your sort of generic 80s, um, you know, sort of like nonsense fantasy stuff. E either way is, again, totally your choice. There's a million different ways you could sort of take this. What we want as an artist is control, right? So what you want to think about are like what makes something look a particular way, right? Like how do I control this? How do I sort of uh, modify these things? So what I'll do is we'll look at kind of how we would control making the character, again, look a little bit less kind of like um, muscular, right? So we can still keep the same frame, but maybe we will sort of just contract some of those forms a little bit and think, yeah, just remove some of the, the pop from that mus from that sort of musculature. Again, I, the reason I sort of demonstrate this, it, again, is just because I think it's good to be able to have that flexibility in general, right? And it's good to know the difference between what makes something look one way versus what makes it look um, a different way. And if you have that control, then you can sort of do whatever you want. And also, I think it is it is worth pursuing this as an idea because it's very easy um, to get into the habit of just kind of drawing everything as being hypermuscled, right? Everything being, um, you know, a very particular way. And uh, I, I think again, control and, and options are, are a really, really, really good thing to have. So if we're going to think about um, thinking about the center line here. Right, just going to pop out that stomach a little bit to make it a little bit more realistic. All right, put in his torso, and then again, you could we could easily just sort of move those shoulders in, if if you wanted to, or we could kind of leave them leave them out. But it's possible using the concepts of proportion to kind of keep tweaking. Right, so if you sort of notice that things are looking a particular way then we can just sort of modify that and just say, you know what, let's bring those shoulders in a little bit. And what you'll notice is we, we don't have to bring them in much to really, really change the, 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 the feel of the character and what's happening. All right, so if we sort of define... All right, think about... This is where, again, thinking about... Um, the skeleton and where those things are is super, super handy. What I'll do is I'll, I'll just play around with that with a bit and then I'll look at it, see if I can look at it straight on. Now, there's also a good point here, which is that often when we're going crazy trying to sort of mass in muscles, it'll work really well for your typical fantasy character or, again, your typical street fighter character where you're trying to represent someone with low body fat. And, you know, I think that's very much a, a valid goal is to just figure out how to draw all of those muscles and kind of put them all in, right? To just sort of go crazy. The trick is, again, often that sort of stuff doesn't work that well when you're trying to just draw more of a natural figure. So what you often have to do is kind of put in those things. And then when you're doing your finished line, we, we kind of just maybe lose some of the, that interior detail right we, we lose those kind of striations of the muscle right things get less lean we think less about sort of muscles but they will still show up in many cases right they'll, they'll still show up like um on the exterior we we'll still see the you know the the change in in you know what the what the outline of the of the character will, will look like um and again you know that might be a case of you know wanting to 
like remove the the pop of those deltoids right make them a little bit smoother totally again up to you how you kind of handle that. things that you know you can sort of be more subtle with if you're trying to get again not like a, a superhero muscled sort of look is you know people don't often have that necks that are that thick right um it can be a little bit a little bit too much to kind of put these sort of giant bodybuilding necks on everything um so probably this neck in general is is going to be a little bit um long for that character so that's again where you can think more about just proportion right we want the the chin to kind of be there right the the actual kind of head or the skull of the character might be a, a little bit kind of lower again just trying to put something in there that's going to make sense right we've got sort of a, a nose and some ears and then again be good to kind of play with some sort of hair so again this is where just roughing things in or, or playing around with it will, will kind of help thinking about putting it in again super super rough we're still thinking about structure um, and again the more you think about structure the you know more it's it's going to look sort of hyper muscled and like there's lots of anatomical markers on there often what happens is again part of the process is removing those and letting them letting them go so again not sure exactly what what we want to do maybe i'll just put some sort of we, we won't we won't play around too much with that just think about some sort of basic hair and yeah so let's let's you know check that out let's have a look at that from more of a front-on perspective and we'll see we'll see kind of what mistakes have been made all right and i still need my little bit of paper to protect so yeah again i feel like that's sort of working okay just need to sharpen that pencil a bit Yeah, let's just sort of double, triple check the center line for these anatomical points and just refine the outline. Define, define center. Again, this is also something where if, if you're drawing quite small, what you often find is you, you kind of need to, you need to suggest a little bit, right? So it'll often be a little bit trickier to get things looking exactly right if you're dealing with sketch paper, because the more we kind of hack up the paper, right, the, the, the more we mess things up the harder it becomes to make little sort of fine adjustments right and and not have things be you know completely trashed in terms of a sort of paper surface point of view so again this is why i always say you know when i'm doing these demos you know sketch paper will be kind of good up to a point and then after that point what you'll find is you, you start to wish that you use something that was a little bit more sturdy, right? That's going to allow us to sort of explore things a bit better. All right, so putting in, again, thinking about that sort of structure, right? Here's where that nose is, right? And let's think about where those eyes are going to be positioned again this tends to be like an easy way for me to do it again that's actually using a little bit of the 
a few of the concepts that you might find in the Riley method, right? The rhythms um, that can be quite sort of useful. So again, as I said, what you tend to find is the more structural you get, the more you try and kind of solve these things, the um, more sort of stuff tends to look a little bit weird because you get all these kind of lines everywhere. And that's another major point that's really, really worth um, going into is that, yeah, you, you often find that you need to practice so much to understand where you're going to have these situations where the drawing doesn't look good. Right? It's very common to have stages where the drawing just doesn't work, right? The drawing just doesn't doesn't look good. It, it doesn't sort of work. And yeah, you, you're just going to have to um, figure out, okay, that's fine, right? This is this stage and you know, you, you know that it, it will get better and, you know, it'll, it'll sort of work out more as you, as you progress. Again, if you do another pass, you have confidence that that'll kind of work. And uh, again, that's just part of the, the learning process. It's why it's really important to kind of do the work that you actually want to do because those are the small little tricks you kind of learn. It's easy to practice a bunch of simple, you know, sort of loomis techniques, but often the trick is that you actually need to do it at a particular size. And, you know, it can be tricky to even put in all the lines you want if you're drawing characters that are, you know, uh, a certain size, right? It can just be a huge challenge to even do the thing you've been practicing to do. Whereas if you always practice, you know, drawing at the size, you know, with the sort of intent, with the level of detail that you're actually planning to use for your real work, whatever that is, then you'll have a much better result overall. You'll be, you'll be able to connect the ideas to the actual concepts that you, you want to use. All right, so again here, I feel like the we can kind of finesse that, see if we can make that line of that chin a little bit more sort of delicate, right? Um, and again, this is this is a large part of of how we would sort of progress through the drawing. Now, I don't want to, you know, go crazy with all of these things and, you know, create heaps and heaps and heaps of detail here because that's not the point. The point here is to kind of discuss and look at how you would build these things up. So we'll build up a few little bits here and there and we'll kind of look at how that sort of tends to work. But again, as part of that, I'm just kind of thinking about adding some some structure and detail there. Um, as I often say, you know, if you're looking to draw something more cartoony, you, you can use a lot of the same sort of Loomis concepts to, um, you know, place features. But, you know, often one of the things that, you know, we need to pay attention to is just what does the character feel like? You know, do they feel like they are, you know, having the right emotion. And, and so much of that is, is just real sort of magic, really. It's just a matter of playing around with the iconography of, of the lines and these little bits and pieces. Um, what I am going to do is sort of increase the, the size of this. Um, sort of hair here. And it's super easy here to kind of lose the, the overall sort of concept of size, right? So her head is kind of looking, yeah, like, you know, a, a little bit sort of big, right? Again, there's probably a, a large number of reasons why that is that is the case. Um, but again, I think her ears were a big part of that. So I think if I kind of take them out again, it's going to decrease that that look a little bit. Um, but again, you know, she is looking like, again, quite a small character. And if I was doing this on computer or if I was trying to, you know, do something other than a drawing, um, focusing on form, this is where, again, you know, you do an extra sort of version of this. You would do some different, um, you know, you'd probably, if it was sort of Photoshop or, you know, a... Um, a, a real sort of process you, you could either redraw the head you could make the head smaller you could do all those things before you go and actually do the, the the finished kind of line work but when we're sketching around here again the goal is just having fun 
and in this case showing form and structure etc and yeah i would definitely you know probably not be spending as much time fiddling around with this if, if this was something where i was kind of just drawing it for myself right you know i'm spending a little bit more time on the structure and thinking through that um, there's probably a lot of sort of cheaty ways that i would kind of solve problems and uh, avoid mistakes that i'd made etc etc but hopefully you you get the the idea here and sort of how it sort of functions right it's just a matter of sort of progressing through so i've sort of you know started to work up some of those little bits and pieces um again i'd, I'd say these sort of arms are starting to look a little bit kind of long if anything so i think this one especially we could probably oh it might not actually be too bad i think it's just this one is like a little bit a little bit sort of long but again, it, the question is, is it within the realm of possibility, right? Is, is it sort of feasible? And we can always maybe make that a little bit more feasible by making the legs a little bit longer, right? Making that feel a little bit more realistic. But yeah, so again, the process is, is often a matter of going through, right? Sort of adding structure. And then what we do is take that sort of structure that we sort of developed there, right? You sort of put you sort of put it in the right kind of place, and then we can go through and start to refine where those little bits and pieces are. And again, you know, if we were to go through and kind of keep noodling this drawing it would probably you know take quite a while right there's there's lots of little bits and pieces here lots of things to consider and if we're trying to get it all right again it'll it'll take time that's totally that's totally fine so don't feel like again you need to do things in you know any particular time or it's just whatever whatever works for you again i like doing things relatively quickly that's kind of how my patience level works but yeah it can take quite a while to really figure out a lot of this kind of proportion so again we've got kind of like a proportionally and anatomically right we've got sort of um, one of the things that happens again when you're sort of looking at a character you the the thing from a different angle the, the head will tend to get, looks a little bit smaller. Whereas when, when I sort of see it front on, I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, the, the, the head now seems a, a lot bigger. As I said, simple things you can do to kind of make that a little bit more plausible uh, to kind of, you know, redraw the, the legs or, you know, make things a little bit longer. Which uh, again, you know, is a bit of a pain, but that's kind of it's it's good i think to just have the freedom to redraw right and not fear the the redrawing um the the, the less you fear redrawing the easier <laughs> your your whole sort of drawing drawing life will be so yeah you can keep finessing keep fiddling around and using these uh you know just the the redraw redraw you know see what works or you can go back to basics and say, you know what, I'm going to repose that. Let's go back to stick figures, right? Let's think about where these things are sitting on the ground. And let's kind of repose that using the mannequin. So these concepts of, you know, your mannequin or you using structural drawing, you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, it doesn't have to end at any particular point in time, right? You can keep using the same ideas all the way through if you need to repose something. If you need to redo it, that's, again, totally, totally fine. So, again, the character feels a little bit more, um, a little bit more sort of reasonable, right? From a proportional standpoint now. And, again, we might refine some of these lines that got a little bit drawn over, right? These things got drawn over many, many times. And it might be good to just sort of say, let's pick some of those smaller lines, right? Let's pick the inside of that line that we sort of got before and made the outside of the line. 
And that's another one of these things that can change, you know, as you progress is, you know, you work through the drawing and things are working well. And then, you know, you kind of have a bunch of sketchy lines, right? A bunch of messy, sketchy lines everywhere. Again, that's totally, that's totally okay. But just remember that at some point you kind of have to pick the right one. You know, you have to figure out which, which one of those lines is the right messy line. And that's where it can be really tricky because if you sort of pick the wrong one, if you're not double checking, stepping back again, double checking proportion, etc., can be really hard to figure that out. So again, let's let's look at doing a, a similar thing here quickly, and then we'll probably sort of leave it for this one. Um, again, just talking about sort of structural drawing and and how we how we control some of these issues. As I said, it would probably be you know a three hour drawing or something like that if I really sort of took this through to to, to finish. So what we're going to be doing here is still using those concepts of structure. Let's move this down a little bit so we can see it. And what I might do again is kind of look at it from that kind of angle and just make sure that I've got some of that dimensionality in there. So what I'm doing as I look back at it is I'm checking center. I'm redefining center. So one of the things I noticed is like I really think we could improve on the shape of that nose right we could draw it out a little bit better right think about where center line of this is let's retrack where those cheekbones are right don't and again this is you know what i do now i i'm not always going to be doing this with the pencil right the, the more you need to kind of learn, right, the more you're sort of learning as you go, the more you need to actually go in there and, you know, you, you really got to kind of put in these marks and erase them and sort of figure it out and, and sort of put down the notations. But when you have done this many, 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 many times, you can kind of see some of these things and you can kind of trace them and go, oh, I need to move this up. Oh, this is in the wrong spot. So it's not always a situation where, um, you know, you're having to have these kind of crazy lines over the top of everything, right? That's not always what we need. It's just something that kind of helps us. It helps to frame what's going on and, again, describe it. So, you know, these are things that, again, I would use for teaching, but I also use for teaching myself. You know, if I'm, if I'm halfway through a drawing and things are not working, Again, it's often because of one of those simple concepts that I need to fix. And so, you know, it's, it can be a matter of just working it out on the page, putting in all those bits and pieces. So again, I'm going to think about the dimensionality of what's happening here. Again, we could sort of trace that round. Right, and then tracing around that sort of lower lip. Put in one tooth, and then again, we'll sort of trace that over. Right, try and transfer where that tooth is going gonna, is gonna to go. We'll put it up there. Let's find center. We've got center, 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 center. Right, find that structure. Um, so yeah, you, again, like I, I'm feeling a little bit, a little bit stronger about this concept, right? From a structural standpoint. Again, let's find the point at which this sort of beard thing kicks out here, and this is where again, as you would, the, the, the structure is often one of the most challenging things to deal with from an accuracy standpoint. So really figuring out like where does one thing start and stop can be sort of tricky. But, you know, the more I kind of add stuff, right, if I sort of add some furriness to these uh, ears or something like that, right, the more I do that, the less it kind of specifically matters. So if you, if you do pretty well at the construction phase to begin with, then it becomes a lot easier to go in there and you know, add the rest of these things and just kind of add detail as, as it were.
Now, again, there's a lot of, you know, process and skill and kind of, you know, stuff you have to, you know, do in order to figure out how to add all those details. But often there there, there is a forgiveness in the end where you kind of add details and you're like, oh, that kind of looks okay. These things didn't matter that much, right? Um, yeah. So again, I'm still going to be thinking about where that center line is. And yeah, you know, I kind of want like, you know, the center of this beard sort of thing to, you know, line up kind of like with the center of the chest, right? With the center of those pectorals. So that's kind of the, the goal there, right? But again, you know, it, the actual drawing of it might be, yeah, might be a little bit more. Um, furry, right, or, or less defined, right? Again, we've got some sort of hair coming down here. We're going to have some hair coming down there, something like that. And again, this is where it's really good to be able to sort of trace those lines, right? Think about the symmetry. I've got sort of center here, and, and what I'm thinking about is, is this form, right? How far is this, right, over here? And this is just a constant interplay. This is where structural drawing and understanding what's happening will, will really kind of help. The, the, the more I can kind of figure that out, the better. Now, as I kind of look at that, I can see, yeah, look, maybe it's, maybe it's important to just define some of those points a little bit better because I can see that drawing, I can see that sort of losing a bit of structure because I'm looking at it from an angle again. So again, the more I sort of find some of that structure, right? I really want to, sorry, can't see it. I really want to sort of emphasize the, the mass of that chest, right? So again, that kind of works there. I think, again, we could kind of bring this out a little bit, right? That's going to help with that, with that kind of look. And again, I feel like we could also move right this up right so there we go again just trying to just trying to get that get that center get the structure get the side to side get that happening and as we've got hair coming down here going bump right again where's that going to go uh, yeah you know what I think it's going to go over here so it's often you know as as we put in more of those details we kind of see where maybe some of that initial structure isn't as good as it could be right where maybe we've just sort of blocked stuff in and it's like you know look it's it's not bad it's just not great um, and so we refine things often what we're dealing with here is just refining things by millimeters right it's like a tiny <laughs> It's a, it's a tiny little bit of change here or there that's going to make the difference between something sort of being in perspective and something being out of perspective or, or really kind of feeling wrong. So it is very important to just understand that, that the battle is a battle of, um, of small little tiny marks, not necessarily of, you know, these kind of big, big changes that you're making. And often what you're doing is is sort of looking through the drawing and tweaking things and, and playing around with things and sort of reassessing structure, reassess, reassessing the center line. And as a general rule, the more of this you get right in the beginning, the easier everything is. <laughs> so that's why, again, the, the more of that stuff we do at the beginning where we, you know, double, triple check things, uh, yeah, you know, just be as honest and as straightforward with what we're doing as possible not trying to you know expecting that you know if, if we don't get it really solid that you know it's it's sort of going to end badly uh, which is often the case right it, it's it, it's often the case that if you sort of skimp in the beginning it doesn't get better right things rarely just magically get good <laughs> um, if, if we sort of haven't figured out the um, if we haven't figured it all out properly so again, um, I feel like this arm could sort of go in a little bit more. We could sort of play around with that. But hopefully you get the idea about, you know, how this might work, right? Like what's actually going on here. 
And it's just a matter of sort of rinse and repeat. As I often say, I mean, I often say that I often say, but <laughs> I often say drawing and, and sort of getting good at this kind of structural drawing is just a matter of doing the same basic things again and again and again and again and again and again and again. And, again. and you know, just trying to sort of make them work, right? Trying to make them sort of solid or... Um, just keep doing them and keep making it right every time. But the, the challenge is that's actually quite hard to do. So instead of thinking of drawing as being this kind of massive series of complicated problems, it, it's actually just probably a bigger series of very, very small problems where you just have to keep doing the same thing, keep checking center, keep checking symmetry, keep checking the form, keep thinking about perspective, keep thinking about these these couple of basic concepts, right? Have I drawn through? Do, do I know where, there's, where that actually is going? If we just keep doing these basic things, then everything will kind of work out. The trick is often when I'm focusing on one thing that's really important and I, and I sort of forget about another thing. Again, I'll be focusing on anatomy, but I forget about symmetry. I'd be focusing on symmetry, but I forget about the center line. And it's often just a compounding of these mistakes that will make the difference and cause things to start looking a little bit wobbly. As I move through this drawing, right, I would probably keep playing around with uh, these concepts, keep tweaking things, keep moving. And depending on how detailed we need to go, we just um, would kind of spend more time at these early phases. So, you know, you could view this as just, again, one construction phase, which really is what this sort of level of drawing is. It's just sort of a construction. And then we would probably redo all of this drawing uh, again, you know, focusing on the finished lines and, you know, making sure it's all kind of polished. And again, it's just a matter of doing the right stuff at the right time. But probably, again, you know, I'd go through, you know, we'd, we'd sort of think about maybe, you know, moving this shoulder back. Again, adjusting, moving this, tweaking this, thinking about this form, thinking about the measurements, um, double checking, and we just sort of keep going. Now, a lot of this is down to how much effort and time you have for any drawing. As I often see with comics, if you have more time, you can do a better drawing. So, you know, what you might find is ways to actually make sure you still do a good drawing while um, you know doing it in a good amount of time is to pick poses and things that you either already know or that are quite simple. So you know if you're always if you're thinking about this and you're practicing, just remember if you make it complicated, if you add you know complicated poses or you know anything that you know is going to sort of up the complexity, you know adding a lot of foreshortening, drawing things you haven't drawn before, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, just realize, you know, that's going to increase the amount of time that you're going to need to take in order to really figure everything out and, and do a good job. You know, you might need to get some anatomy reference for, you know, what arms look like at a particular angle, etc., etc. That's all part of the journey. Anyway, that's all I've got for this one. Um, again, a little bit of demo, a little bit of um, advice. Hopefully this has been interesting. Let me know if you'd like me to do some demonstrations of other subjects or things that you know might be useful to you might do some backgrounds or maybe some science fiction um, maybe some more action poses in a similar kind of vein to this where again we probably need to pose it better to just make sure everything kind of lines up remember a lot of good art is planned that's uh, super super important but anyway that's all i've got for now we'll catch you around happy drawing